This aircraft, its first test flight, it, it flew with zero priority one and priority two defects. And a lot of that has been attributed to the quality of the test tools and the testing that was done in this lab to, again, that whole idea of, of um, getting a bench running a year in advance of an aircraft and being able to do a lot of testing with engineering releases and, 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 and initial software releases and solving the problems here before it ever gets to the aircraft. It made that a lot smoother for them. Now what we've done, we're talking about common software. We actually start out, and all of our models we actually use, uh, again, in the software development scheme, our, our modeled software for the different um, EGIs, air data computers and things, we reuse those from bench to bench. So as we develop new benches, there's less rework. Uh, we just basically add the changes for maybe an air data computer on the 53s using a different bus than the air data computer here. One of the things we do with these models, I have an ADC up here, I can set various faults. see if my displays correctly um, caught the fault. So I failed the altitude on the air data computer. And you can see that the enunciation flags came up. This is the kind of testing we do in here. We can actually set every fault on here and have everything go red, something you wouldn't want to do on a real aircraft. But then you can see if there's any interaction in software and hardware when you have an extreme case like that. When you're doing software testing, if you test for the extreme and you don't find any interactions, then generally the kind of easier things don't cause you any problems either. So we actually do some extreme testing here that would, would never be done on the aircraft. Uh, I can tune instruments. I can also actually set biases. So if I wanted to create, say, a, uh, a barrel miscompare, I can offset the barometer set from 29.9 or 2 for the air data computer. It's actually simulated in software, but that's the box that represents it on top. When I do that, you can see that my standby instrument, which is the master barrel set, is set at 29.9 or 2. I've told the, the internal ADC model to go up to 39 to when I get a barrel miscompare. So again, all the faults, um, all, the, all the biases, I can change the altitude without ever having to fly the bench. Um, but if I want to, I can pick up a joystick and I can take off. And I can fly the bench around. I can load flight plans into the CDUs. I can fly the flight plan. So we actually had a problem with the new uh, the new DAFIF database just last week. There was a, an anomaly on one of the test flights, and they got a brand new da DAFIF database, and they found out that one of the approaches wasn't behaving correctly, or they didn't think it was behaving correctly. They brought their flight plan in here, put it in in the uh, the data loader, loaded it on the CDU. And we flew the flight plan here with a pilot who actually flew the test flight. He looked at the anomaly, he saw what the problem was, he was able to write his report up better.